the River Uya Viaduct. The Orense Santiago Main Line, an action task to the Railway Infrastructure Administrator, ADIF, crosses the River Uya through a beautiful spot known as the Paso da Cova via a long 630 meter viaduct, which is part of the Sillera Vedra and Vedra Bocachon subsection. The adoption of an arch whose main bay has a height span ratio of 105 168 meters is due to the environmental need to safeguard the LIC Uja Dessa fluvial system delimited by the river and the riverside vegetation on its banks. In this way, it is similar to the old viaduct of Gondian, which is located 130 meters upstream and crosses the river via an arch with a span of 52 meters and whose finalization in 1958 meant the overcoming of the last difficulty standing in the way of the completion of the Zamora La Coruña railway line. The alignment plan of the River Uja viaduct is straight. Its piers, which measure up to 117 meters, position the platform 40 meters higher than that of the Gundian, which is a record in our country in terms of arch and pier height in railway viaducts. The platform is a conventional continuous post-tension concrete girder with a constant thickness of 3.89 meters and a width of 14 meters. It is supported by nine piers which are cemented to the ground and by another five pilasters that rest on the arch in such a way that the viaduct has an access section to the central arch of 251 meters on the right side, distributed into five bays and another of 198.50 meters on the left side in four bays, with maximum spans of 52 meters. The cross-section of the caisson of the central arch of the viaduct is 7.70 meters wide and 3.50 meters thick. Its diatrix, which is a total length of 277.56 meters, is a polygonal with 2.50 meter sections, except for the initial 10.155 meters of the startups. Its location between the Castro and Caldelas tunnels in a marked V-shaped valley through which quite strong winds blow has meant that the determination of the size of the viaduct has had to allow for the installation of wind protection screens and that its piers and arch have been designed with curved sections on their side faces. Building process The complicated geotechnics of the enclave have meant that in most cases deep foundations with 1.8 meter diameter piles have been used. When the foundations are finished, the execution of the abutments and piers of the access section on the right side begins, using self-climbing formwork in 4 meter long sections. As the piers are gradually finished, the corresponding platform bay is executed via self-supporting launching force work enabling a 52-meter bay to be cemented in eight days. When the five bays on this side are completed, the movable scaffolding system is dismantled and moved to the abutment on the other side to complete the four bays of the access section. The caisson is cemented in two phases, the first comprises the execution of the U of the Kaisan to then remove the interior formwork and to position some ribbed floor plates which serve as lost formwork for the upper slab. The execution of the bay ends with the tensioning of the pre-tensioned cables. The arch is begun at both ends with the building of the initial startups via centering formwork, which are then followed by 26 segments per semi-arch measuring 5 meters long. They are executed with the help of two travelling formwork cranes in cantilever, which are articulated at their midpoint, enabling the concreting of one segment per week. The execution of each semi-arch is done in cantilever with the help of 12 provisional stays, each formed by two identical tendons, comprising a varying number of steel ropes, which may amount to up to 60 to withstand maximum loads of 1,552 tonnes. Their size has been determined so that at all times they work below 50% of their maximum load capacity. The four lower stays tighten the arch from the adjoining pier and the eight remaining stays tighten the arch from the platform. A guy stay is also used to offset the stresses induced on each adjoining pier, which is tightened at mid-height 
up to the pile cap of the next pier. The stays are assembled as the building of the arch progresses and they are acted upon in different phases, up to a total of 112 tensioning and detensioning maneuvers. The arch is executed at the same time as the pilasters and the platform, so that when the position of a pilaster is reached, the latter is executed along with the corresponding 26.5 meter bay by means of a second lot of self-supporting false work. In order to monitor the building of a structure which is as evolving and complex as this, an instrumentation system has been planned which serves to verify the performance of the structure at each moment in time. The system is supported by a 120-channel data acquisition system, DAS, which allows the installation of the same number of sensors, including load cells, which provide information on the stresses in the stays. Bar extensometers, inserted in concrete to know the stresses in the piers and the arch. Inclinometers, which measure angles of slope in the execution of the pilasters. Instrumented stops in abutments in order to know the stress of the platform as a stay and finally thermal probes and anemometers. With the execution of this construction work, Adif continues to pave the way. A new stimulus for the Orense Santiago high-speed line, which will serve to connect Galicia to the northwest and the center of the peninsula. A fast, modern, efficient method of transport for the benefit of the autonomous region of Galicia and all its inhabitants. Shortening distances, bringing people closer. Ministry of Infrastructure, Government of Spain.